Hello. Good morning. Afternoon for some of you. How are you doing? Can you guys hear me? Good morning. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy holidays to everyone. We'll give us a couple minutes. Good morning, Janet. Nice to see you. Good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning. Jen, I feel like it's been forever since I've seen you. A lot's happened since then. All right. Good morning. Morning. Afternoon. If you're East Coast, I haven't forgot about you. All right. Give me just another couple of moments and then we're going to get started. I want to honor your time. All right, so uh, if you can, if you do have the ability to be on video this morning or this afternoon, if you're on the East Coast, I'm sure would love for you to be if it's at all possible. Uh, there is going to be a little participation in our, in our conversation today, so we would love for you guys to be a part of it, if at all possible. See some familiar faces here. Good to see you guys. Excellent. <laughs> And go ahead and keep yourself on mute unless we get it, get you involved in the conversation, if you don't mind, please. All right. Well, good morning, afternoon, East Coasters. My name is John Vandergens. I'm a MAPS coach. I'm a head coach. I'm an executive mastery coach. I have the uh, distinct benefit of working with amazing MAPS clients, some of our greatest teams here at Keller Williams, as well as some of our greatest team leaders and OPs. Uh, I also have the benefit and the, the absolute honor of working with uh, the, the transformational uh, performance coaches uh, as part of our coaching family of services here with MAPS Coaching. Um, and I'm just really grateful uh, to be able to spend the time with you because as I learn more about you folks, hi Susan, how are you? As I learn more about you guys and get to, to, to learn about how you operate and the businesses and lives that you're building, it is just an absolute honor to be on the path with many of you in creating that life by design. And I just come back to this so often about how grateful we are for our clients here at MAPS. And again, that, that ability, that opportunity to build a partnership together. So, we have some good stuff today. I'm actually really excited about this call. I know many of you have been on, on group calls with before, and I'm very, very excited about this content today. Um, and uh, I think you'll see why in just a moment. So we're going to start with some perspectives to consider. And what I mean by perspectives is a perspective is a chosen way of seeing something, right? It's a, you might consider it like a mindset. Uh, a simple example might be something that I have to do in my work. I might see it as an obligation or I might see it as an opportunity. I might see working with a buyer as um, or a seller as something that I have to do versus something that I get to do. And it's the choice of perspectives that really typically shapes the way that we live our lives and our day-to-day -day businesses, our families, our relationships, all of the above. So perspectives are very, very important to consider as we as we go through this. So we're starting with some perspectives right at the very beginning here. I'm going to kind of go through these pretty quickly. Um, and yet you'll have access to these recordings as well if you want to slow the recording down and uh, do some thinking on it on your own. So many of us are familiar with the, the, the saying that those that don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. And I choose to look at this as a little bit more of the opportunistic way that those that know their history have the opportunity to do something differently next time. However, either way, it's true. The past history plays a vital role in our lives and in our businesses. If, for instance, in a listing presentation, we used a specific language pattern that absolutely caused that listing presentation to fail. If we didn't learn that, we would probably be likely to do it again. Yet if we did learn the lesson, we could change it the next time we went into a listing presentation and potentially produce a different result. So this is why knowing our history is so important to building a business and building a life. 
I also believe, and I think all of us uh, kind of get this on a, on, a, on a deep level, is that generally humans learn much more from failures than successes. And I think if we're being really honest with ourselves, those failures, those sore spots in lives, those things that didn't work out the way that we wanted to, there are typically much better teachers for us than all the, the, the things that we did well. If that doesn't seem to be true for you, that's okay. I'm just asking you to consider it as a perspective so that we can be empowered and make great choices moving forward. I love the bold law here. Your business grows to the extent that you do. It's a perspective. So think about what we've got so far. If we know our history and we see our failures as the opportunities to learn great lessons, is there a better way to grow than to really internalize those lessons. <coughs> All right. Oops, sorry about that. And if you don't mind, keep yourself on mute there until we call on you. So we have a clear line. Thanks. Okay. All right. A couple more perspectives to consider. And you've seen similar things to this before, I'm sure. It's that in every situation, you'll either win or you'll learn. And both winning and learning are incredibly valuable. The only time, my friends, that a loss is actually a loss is when we don't learn something from the loss and change the way that we move forward. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if you guys are, we're, we're, we're tracking on the perspectives here. This is kind of like the pre-work here. I want to make these, make some agreement around these assumptions. If we see the world similarly here, the rest of the presentation when we get into the work is going to make a lot more sense. Okay, and here's a very important one. Carlos and I, Carlos, thank you, by the way. Carlos is here from MAPS uh, facilitating the call today. Carlos, thank you so much for uh, you and MAPS and everything that you guys have done to put together the holiday calls for everyone on these calls today. Uh, Carlos and I were talking about this a little bit before uh, we, uh, we opened up the, the waiting room which was each of us probably has a lot more figured out than you may realize. And this is the only all caps, I believe, in the presentation, which is slow down and think. No. Hang on just a second. I'm going to make sure we got everybody on mute here. All right. Thank you. All right. So the, the thing is, in real estate, we are moving so fast. Do we really take the time when things don't work to slow down and really figure it out? Do we understand the problem well enough to be able to know what the solution would be? So this is the thing I'm going to invite you to consider. For all of you, you're incredibly creative, resourceful, and whole. If there are things that are maybe still confusing to you or murky as to why something happened. You probably have a lot more of it figured out. I would just encourage you to slow down and do some thinking time. And we're going to go through a model here, some questions here to help you do that in just a moment. Okay. All right. Any thoughts on the perspectives so far? Take yourself off mute. Just say your name very quickly and let us know what thoughts you may have. Either the page above about history learning more from our failures, our successes, our business grows to the extent that we do. Why I, We either win or learn, and both are incredibly valuable, or we probably have a lot more figured out if we just slowed down a little bit and thought about it. Hi, guys. This is Dean Moss from Chicago. Um, I think good, good, good morning or afternoon, or I don't think it's night for too many people, but if it is, good night. Um, I just wanted to say that what we normally do when something happens in the moment it's our human nature to want to react to it. It's, it's almost visceral sometimes. Uh, but I found, and, and John, and probably what you found too, is if you take a second, close your eyes, almost count to, to a figurative 10, you can get past those tough times. You go plan for it. I had a team member that was, man, everything was bothering her and it was driving her crazy and every, everything was the end of the world. I said, just relax, close your eyes and think of how strategically you're going to deal with it. And it changed her life. Just, you don't have to jump on everything. Such a great point. Opportunity. Yeah, no, absolutely. And thanks for the value add. Um, Steve, great point. And you're talking about too is 
not only are you taking this stuff that with these perspectives, you're also mixing that with like a high degree of emotional intelligence. What you just helped your team member do was what we call self-management. Just by sometimes helping clear the emotions, our resourcefulness reemerges in the moment, doesn't it? Well said, well said. Okay, last consider uh, perspective to consider. Check in with yourself on this. I'm going to ask you guys about this. Is it true for you that you typically have the most excitement, energy, and engagement to hit your goals when your goals are clearly defined, specific, measurable, and attainable? Is it true that you have the most energy, excitement, and engagement when the goals have a deeper meaning? There's a why to the goals. It's not just about a profit number. It's about what the profit number will do for you or others or what, how it will help you realize your big why. Typically, we have more excitement, energy, and engagement around goals when there's a clear plan on how to achieve the goal. And finally, we have the most excitement, energy, and engagement when, we, when we've removed as many obstacles as possible before we encounter the obstacles. Think about when you've set goals in your life and all of these criteria were met. How did you feel about going after the goals at that time? Can we have one or two of you weigh in on this? Anybody want to say yay or nay on this? Again, I'm a coach. I like to ask questions, so sorry. Jack, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Yeah, I definitely think this is true and also, you know, very important as to, you know, building up your business. Um, I think stating your why, I mean, if you don't have a purpose to do anything, there's no drive behind it. And I think once you establish, you know, you know what the true goal is, what the true, you know, you know, once you hit these goals, what that will mean for you, I think at that point you will project, you know, that energy that you're talking about there. Um, so, yeah, I think that's definitely crucial in, you know, starting up your business and getting it rolling. Okay. And who is this, by the yeah. way? Uh, yeah, it's Michael Carrier from Cincinnati. Oh. Hey, Michael. All right. Great. Yeah, great point. <clears throat> and I, I want to invite Michael to your to your point, the way you said it. I appreciate the way that you expressed it. Check in if you're thinking into your 2022 goals at this point, everyone. Think about the way that Michael said it. Think about which, if any of these may be missing right now from the clarity around your goals in 22. And maybe make a note about that and do some work on it in the next couple of days. Okay, great. Michael, thank you for sharing. All right. So now that we've talked about our perspectives, we talked about the most energizing goals, we talked about history, our learning comes from our failures more so than our successes, and that everything will be a win for us if we choose to see it that way. Let's talk about goals for the rest of our session here. You saw the title, Reflect, Reinvent, and Recharge for 2022. So today we're going to work through reflecting. Learn how to turn our events, particularly ones that did not go as we expected, into knowledge, perspective, and understanding. All right? How cool would it be for every person to be able to have, like that Steve supported that, the person on his team earlier, right? To be able to reflect immediately, gain perspective. And then to the second step here, reinvent ourselves, make decisions about who we are that create a new possibility for the future. Yeah. Friends, I believe that when we're excited about the future, about the possibilities for the future, it pulls us forward. It's not just about a number. It's about what that number, uh, whether it's a unit count or a profit number or a GCI number or a, a recruiting number or a number of R2s or whatever the metric is. It's the possibility of what that number means that actually gets us excited for the future. Does that make sense? Okay. And then finally, the third goal will be to work on recharging meaning leveraging those possibilities, choosing to focus on those possibilities in a way that re-engages us with our goals and eventually will create greater success. Right, if we're all believers in the bold law, if what you focus on expands, well, if you're focusing on possibility and making your possibilities a reality, we have much higher likelihood, I think we all agree, 
in hitting our goals than we would if we were focusing on what limits us instead. Okay, so our goals for our session are gonna be to unpack each of these. And then we're gonna take a little time to work through uh, the model. I kind of figured out a kind of nifty little thing about Google Slides here that I'll be able to share the screen with you in just a moment. And we'll be able to uh, work through the questions and some time together, okay? Okay, so if we're good to go, let's start on reflecting. Now, reflecting, there's kind of, there's two things to re about reflecting. Um, my assumption here that we're working from is that goals are neither made nor broken in a day. If you're looking at annual goals, they typically reflect long periods of the habits, behavior, mindset, all of the above. So if you're looking back on your goals in 2021, don't work through this yet. We're going to do all this together in just a few moments. I'm just going to read through all of this at once, and then we'll get going uh, together and actually do some work on this. Consider in this last year, what goal might you have set that you did not reach? Perhaps it was a unit goal or a GCI goal or a profit goal or maybe a health goal or a relationship goal or a net worth goal. Whatever goal it is, what goal did you set that you did not reach? Okay. Okay. First question is, what was the gap? Let's say that you wanted to close 100 and you closed 80. Okay, then the gap was 20. Second question would be, what caused the gap? This is where it's going to really engage your critical thinking. Looking back, maybe I didn't, uh, wasn't consistent enough with lead generation, or maybe I didn't work on my skill set with lead conversion strongly enough, or maybe I just, um, uh, didn't have the mindset. Uh, I like to call it the bulldog mindset. Maybe I wasn't a bulldog that was just going to tear that bone up until it was gone. That lead was either going to buy or die. Whatever it is, you got to look back and use a critical thinking here and figure out what it was that you could have controlled differently that would have caused the gap to go away. Once we know the causes of the gap, this is where we can translate those into lessons. What lessons are there to learn? And I hope you guys can sense the deep level of opportunity energy inside this question. Because if we're truly learning based, we have a really, really great possibility of having our business grow because we chose to learn. All right. And finally, how could learning these lessons benefit you? So this one, this, this set of questions is going to be about goals that were potentially missed over the course of the last year. All right. Not everything happens slowly, though. Sometimes things happen quickly. And uh, so we also have a, a similar set of questions. I'm going to let you choose which you want to work on in just a moment for things that happen very suddenly. So considering this last year. What event happened that you didn't see coming? I was thinking about a market center um, that uh, uh, I know of or pretty close to, and they had a large number of R2s leave like in a very short amount of time, a large number of cappers, actually. And they didn't know it was coming. Might be an example of what we're talking about here. Okay, this is where the learning begins. Friends, what did we miss that led to the event? What were the signs that we could have been looking at differently than we were? If you could go back, what would you do differently? Finally, questions three and four are the same. What lessons are there to learn? And how could learning these lessons benefit you? All right, and don't worry, I'm going to put these all up on a slide in just a moment. So you get to choose whether you're going to focus on reflecting on the goals or reflecting on maybe a specific event that happened. We good so far? Good. Next, we go to the reinvent phase. Now, based on the lessons that you've listed, this is the cool part. This is the only closed-ended question that we have. Do you want to grow from this? What is a closed-ended question? A question that could be answered in yes or no. Do you want to grow from this? If the answer is yes, do you want to change? 
We know that growth requires change. In fact, they're inextricably intertwined. You can't have growth without change. Yet, yeah, let's think about what that change can do for us. Number two, when you change, how will you do things differently? Number three, when you change, how will you be different? Number four, this is an important question to answer. How will you know you are changing? This is also a very, very important question. Number five, how could you make sure the changes stick over time? How many of us have set out, I mean, New Year's resolutions are a perfect example that we say, yes, I'm excited, 2022, here's the year, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and here's who I'm going to be, and these changes are going to happen, and three weeks later, we're back in our old habits. And that's a normal thing. It takes more energy to change than it does to stay the same. It takes more intentionality to change than it does to stay the same. So if we don't realize that it's so much easier to flip back into our old habits and our old ways of being than it is to change, we've got to think about how we can be purposeful about making the change stick over time. Is this making sense? Good. And there's a lot of different ways that people do this. It can be as simple as putting a post-it note right on the top of your computer monitor with a single word on it. I mean, there's all kind of calendar reminders. I mean, there's so many ways that you guys can use um, tools to help changes stick over time. All right, and then finally, the third phase, recharging. Based on the changes that you will make. So we started with the lessons. Now we're into the changes. Based on the changes, what positive results will these lessons lead to? This is where you're just reminding yourself of the connection between the changes and the results that you want in your life and your business. And why do these results matter? What will these results do for you and do, and do for others? And this is so important, friends. This is so important. Number four, how will you celebrate as you learn the lessons? Every time you show up differently, every time you engage in a different habit, I'm going to encourage you to give yourself a pat on the back. Because change is difficult. And many people don't engage with it because it can be difficult. And yet people that realize the growth that's on the other side of change and they're learning these lessons, those are the people that really create trajectory for their lives and their businesses. It's amazing. Okay. Okay. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to work through these questions. I'm going to give you a few minutes to work quietly on your own. Uh, I'm going to put them all up on the page for you so you can see them all at once. Okay. And then I'm going to ask at the end of this one or two people to share something valuable with the group. And please always, always remember as that Steve and Michael already have today, sharing adds tremendous value to the group. So there could be some things that come up here that maybe are a little touchy or maybe a little bit vulnerable. And that's okay. I can tell you that none of us has it figured out. So you getting out there and sharing, hey, here's the lesson I learned. Here's where I screwed up or here's what didn't hit the goal. And here's what I learned. And here's the changes I'm going to make. And here's how it's going to stick. And here's what it's going to do for me and do for others. When you come through this and you can give these answers to everybody in the group, everybody is going to benefit from that. So please, please, please be generous with what you're willing to share. Okay, now if you give me just a second, I'm going to make sure that you guys can see this. And let's do it this way. Can you guys see all four of those slides there? The reflect. Yes. Reflect, reflect, reinvent, and recharge? Yes. Okay. Is that is that big enough for you guys to see comfortably? Yes. It's All perfect. Right. Okay, perfect. So I'd like to take maybe five minutes, pick an individual goal or an individual event that you want to unpack a little bit, and let's just work through the model here. You'll choose one of the two reflect slides, and then you'll do both the reinvent and the recharge slide. Okay, so let's take five and get some work done here. I'm going to do one too.
Make sure you make some shorthand on the page as to which questions you're answering. Remember, you're not going to be required to share. I really encourage you to go deep with these stuff. A few more minutes. Do we need more time? Are we doing okay? Let's take about another minute here and then we'll, uh, we'll give enough time for a couple of people to share what they've got. All right, guys, uh, you know, I, I worked through this too, and I was I was hoping just to kind of set the stage here that it might be all right if I just shared one here that I I, I did right now. Sure. Um, and I just kind of want to let you know, I'm just going to be open and be vulnerable with the group here, right? Um, a couple of days ago, I was watching my three-year-old son, Jack, and uh, Jack was, uh, as in his terrible threes, he's been extra super duper fussy. And any of you that know that have uh, young children know about that. 
And uh, I kind of got frustrated with Jack and I got a little snappy with him. And I was a little bit embarrassed and ashamed that I, I showed up that way with him. And so I'm working through this. And as I'm reflecting on this, I'm reflecting on an event here. What happened that I didn't see coming? Um, well, I uh, kind of got snappy with Jack. I, I was a little bit stronger with him vocally or I yelled at him a little bit louder than I think I should have. All right. What did I miss that led to the event? Uh, my own stress and my sleep was down. My awareness of my own emotions was down. Hmm. Steve, uh, Steve, particularly, uh, uh, thank you for what you said earlier in the call, because it really, it really got me thinking about that. If I could go back, what would I do differently? I would have breathed or I would have walked out of the room and asked my wife to take over. Right. Parents sometimes got to tag team it. What lessons are that? What the lessons are there to learn? Uh, I really want to learn how to self-manage and be the man that I want to model for my son. Hmm. And how could learning these lessons benefit me? Hmm. Well, when stress is high, if I can take a minute, I'll be, uh, I'll be able to be, stay powerful, remain power, more powerful, more balanced son. He'll become a more powerful and balanced son whose knows he is loved. So on the reinvent slide, based on the lessons that we've learned, do I want to grow from this? Absolutely. 100%. When I change, how will I do things differently? Well, I'm going to stay calm. I'll be collected and controlled. All right. How will I do things differently? I can take a breath. I also realized through this process that I had not been doing my uh, clearing and centering work, my meditation work <clears throat> over the holiday, not nearly as much. And I think it's catching up with me. So how will I know that I'm changing? I'll be doing my clearing and centering work. And that when stuff could trigger me, I'm just going to be able to remain calm and cool, right? So on the recharge, based on the changes, or how would I make sure the changes stick? Uh, I'll put them on a calendar checklist. Just ask, did I clear and center? It's as simple as that for me. Just keep it right in front of my face. Recharging, based on the changes, what positive results will greater relationship with my son? Why does it matter? I love him and I want him to feel loved. What will these results do for him and for myself and others? We'll grow him up to be a complete and growth-minded man. And how am I going to celebrate as I learn these lessons? I'm going to acknowledge that it was done well and that I showed up as a loving father that I choose to be. So thanks for letting me get that out there. And at the same time, this, this, these types of questions, they just cause to such clarity if we choose to operate this way by slowing down. So whether it's an event or whether it's a goal, I'd like to hear from one or two of you guys. Who's got something they would, they'd be open to share with a group. I can jump in. Okay. Who is this by the way? Marty in Omaha. Marty. Hey, hey brother. How are you doing? So thank you so much for your example there. Uh, I feel like mine's less vulnerable, but I didn't get the right hire. Uh, and I didn't cut it off soon enough. Uh, during the 2021, um, I got lucky with some major sales at the end that kind of <laughs> made everything better. But uh, he left, uh, Jake left, and then I did a uh, virtual assistant, and she was not a good choice. Uh, I, I, I chose that out of desperation. Um, so that ended up costing me, actually. And so I backed out of that one, and now I'm I've been alone for the last month, and I'm in the career visioning process. So the reflection is... The hiring process, I didn't quite do it right. There was a there's a gap now in my systems, big time. The reinvent part is I'm in the process of career visioning right now, and I'm scared because I'm gonna I'm afraid that I'm not gonna do it right again. Like I didn't do it totally wrong before, but I don't need someone very good. I need someone great in order to move that at next level because I'm about 50, 60 sales a year. So um, so I'm really focused on on the reinvent part and how will I stick, how will it stick? Um I will follow that career visioning process to the T. And I'm Marty, 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 can I can I pause you real quick? Yeah. yeah. For the benefit of the group, um, go back on the reflect. Yeah. Uh, reflect question number three. What lessons are there to learn? Give it to us in simple, as simple one-liners as you can. So the lessons to learn on the higher was that I should um use that 30, 60, 90 really, really deliberately and and admit when the sales weren't improving with Jake. Like that, this was not the Fantastic. right. Fantastic. Fantastic. And then uh, I'll also ask you, you know, if you can conti maybe continue the work off the call, Marty, what lessons are there to learn about 
uh, how to conduct parts of the CV process differently. That's the reinvent part, right? And I, uh, I don't know exactly, but so I didn't. I, I need to see what am I? What do I need to to do differently in the CV process? Yes. <clears throat> And by the way, Marty, I, I can tell you this, brother, I don't know anybody that's really built an amazing team without going through a lot of sometimes heartache in their hiring process to learn how to hire. Mm -hmm. Learning how to hire is arguably the hardest thing that we will do in building mm -hmm. a business. Yeah, I've learned a lot about myself. It's it's improved my life. I mean, I'm not I'm not crying. I'm not desperate. And I'm not depressed at all. Uh, it's this just, man, I'm, all right. I'm, not, all right. just, I'm all laughing right. at it actually. I'm just smiling because it's like, Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> well, keep going. Marty. Keep going. Yeah. Thank you. And then on the recharge, I want to make sure I hit, you know, those questions. Right. But the way I look at it is I'll be uh, for me, if, when I get this right, I'll be able to do that, take that next business leap for myself, which is to get to 70 uh, units, which will allow me some time in Mexico to invest in a business down there and actually um, buy a place down there so that I can begin to invest my life in, in this particular city um, down there. Um, and then allow me to work with my dad on real estate development. It'll allow me to, to offer a salary bonus for this person that I hire that's going to turn into an operations manager. And then the celebration would be a trip with my team, whatever that is by the end of the year, it should be about three people. So some sort of trip uh, or event to something that would be very special for everybody. I love that. Marty, I also want to challenge you as you go through the CV process with your new hire, uh, with your candidates rather. Yes. Every time you don't skip a step and you go deep in that CV process, whether it's the, the thought process or the life story or the motivation or whatever, or the defense, or please don't skip your references. Every time you do yeah. one of those steps, I want you to give yourself a pat on the back and say, yes, I took the time to get it right. I, and I've been very, very thorough right now. And it's going against my grain as a person, like my personality. It's going very much against the grain. Lots of no's to really talented people already. And it's like, ah. Sounds like you're probably doing the right thing, Marty. Awesome, man. That's such a great example. Way to go, brother. Great value add. Thank you, Marty. Everybody give Marty a thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay. Leanne, you got your hand raised. We want to hear from you. What you got to say? I do. Marty, I made all those mistakes. <laughs> I'm sure even worse. Um, but now I have a great hire, and it is a life-changing experience. Great. Um, this year, when I look back, I think about the power of habits, because when I look at when I develop good habits, ease and success followed. But I had to focus on developing those habits. And I think I did not make my GC, um, um, GCI goal. Mm -hmm. And it's lack of lead generation. It's lack of doing time blocking every day, little blocks that add up, little steps that add up to where I want to go. It's my downfall was saying, oh, you know, I can do lead gen or do other really the big rocks of my day later because I'm all powerful and I don't have to do the minutia that I know I need to do. I'm just going to power through it and get it done. Well, it's 530 and I'm tired. I'm cranky and I'm not going to do the big rock. It's when I look back, the days that I succeed are the ones I really force myself or choose the perspective of, you know, legion or other important big rocks. It's mundane. It's to me, it's scary. It's boring. And I'm okay without doing it this hour. <laughs> um, and, you know, other people can do it. They succeed without, you know, all this legion hours. Well, that's all things I tell myself so I don't have to be like a pro that puts in the time to practice every day. I'm really seeing that doing the month ding thing is being a pro and practicing every day the same thing over and over again. Because lo and behold, the last couple of days I was very productive because I sat down and did things that mundane. Now, what you just said, you just answered the, the number three. Remember on the lessons to learn, I encourage everybody to get this as simple and concise as possible. 
That way it makes it the easiest to remember. So I just heard you say, being a pro means doing the mundane things. How does that, yeah. how well does that capture what you're, you're, all of the, all of what you said into a single sentence? It really does because I know that's when it's against my grain. I'm really challenging my habit. And I see the results despite all of that. So let's go to the reinvent slide here, Leanna. Do you want to grow from this? Do you want to change? I do. I do. Okay. And how are you going to do things differently when you change? Acknowledge that I'm no different than I'm no superhero that will power through, you know, doing the big rocks at the end of my day. I need to do it. At the beginning, when I'm more disciplined, I, I have more motivation, discipline. And the, the discipline is really, um, I see as I get mentally tired. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do something that's, I'm more easily stopped when I run into an obstacle doing my big rock when I'm tired. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. Would you be open to considering a completely different perspective, maybe off the call? Yes. Which is... If lead generation is the path to getting everything in there that you want in your life, what would cause you to be excited about it? Answer that question later. That's for you to consider later on, okay? All right, fantastic, fantastic. So, well, Leanna, as you go through this, how will you know you're changing? When I'm doing the big rocks earlier in the day. Good. When, when I'm not stopped by little obstacles. And finally, how will you make the changes stick over time? Telling it to my fiance because he's so I have accountability and just sharing my vision of growing my business this year. I have a lot of momentum in my business. It's going to take really being a pro. I love this. I love this idea of being a pro. Wow, amazing. Great, great frame. Okay, finally to the recharge phase, Leanna. Based on the changes that you're going to make, what positive results will these lessons lead to? I have more time to do the things I love, be with my friends and family, and not feel torn, not have to work 10 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, this year, I took more control of my life because I actually took two days off and it's out of after 17 years and it is wonderful. I want more of that. And how are you going to celebrate as, as you learn the lessons and your business grows? Um, I got into cycling and it would be awesome to do like a, maybe a week long cycling trip through some exotic land, yeah. you no know, backpacking. Fantastic. Okay. And we may not have all the answers yet. Uh, the point is, Leanna, Marty, did you guys get something valuable out of putting yourself through the process of just asking yourself the questions? Yes. Okay. This is the power of this kind of stuff, my friends. It's when you give yourself the time and the discipline to look back and really analyze things, reflect on them. You can reinvent yourself and then recharge your batteries to move forward powerfully because you have a new option or maybe a rediscovered option available to you. So making sense? Okay, so I'm not gonna stop sharing for a second. I just wanna take a couple of minutes, wrap up here. And I'd like to hear what you guys are getting out of the call today. Like, what are you getting out of this? Maybe some aha, some things that you're thinking about as a result of our time and our conversation. What you got? Hey, John, Amanda here from hey, St. Louis. So, um, hi, Amanda. Yeah. I think uh, overall for me, the biggest thing is, um, you know, I'm, I'm on the op side, so I don't have the agent perspective like many of the wonderful agents on this call, uh, but I'm part of a team that really, you know, it's, it's a wonderful thing. The business grows to the extent you do. Well, my team leader sees that as very, very, personal like each team member you know we are deeply encouraged to attend these things um, and spend time working on us and I used to feel really guilty about that 
<laughs> just in the sense, like, sh- should I? And what's your answer? No, I should not. You not should not feel guilty. In I you. should not feel guilty for investing in me. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the opportunity, you just you start thinking. I was thinking. I was talking to a a, a very large team who has a, a good director of operations that has the potential to be a really great director of operations a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I asked the rainmaker to name the director of operations in the industry that she wants to grow that person into. She gave me a different name. And she said, I said, well, what growth path have you guys agreed on that's going to cause her to become that person? Yeah. And so what you're saying, Amanda, is absolutely true. Is that when our people have a great sense of, of self personal development as well as a growth and learning mindset, everybody benefits. So thank you for saying that because we are truly in teams, we are truly interdependent with each other's growth, aren't we? Certainly. And I come from just like a complete different background of just the opposite. And so I didn't really understand that. Glad you're here. So. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you for sharing that. Who saw it, Seth Forest? Uh, I thought <coughs> this uh, was really very timely. Hi. For someone who had, you know, for myself, I mean, like I say, I got better this, this 2020 and then 2020, 2020, the biggest thing I had just like Maria is uh, really leveraging. Um, but I noticed that I spent a lot more, not just on the 20% but going beyond my 20%, you know, which was stretching. And part of the challenge was really, um, how do I leverage? You know, I need to have a second admin to make sure that something is under control and I can, you know, focus on the high level. So. It, this uh, presentation is really very timely. Mean, I think this is just exactly finishing and go- going back to the drawing board after this. So great, great content. Thank you. And I appreciate you taking the, t- taking the time with me to look at it seriously for yourself. And leverage is the secret of Keller Williams. If you think about it, it's the one thing that we understand in an entirely different way than just about any other brokerage, and team building and all of that. Okay, great. Okay, we'll do one more and then we'll wrap up. Bobby, what you got for us, brother? Hey man, I just first of all want to say thank you for that share you did earlier because I'm a, I'm a new dad myself with a two and a half year old. So you took me right there uh, in that moment. And it's just like, how do you put on that br- on the brakes or the pause button yeah. in those moments, right? Yeah. And, um, and I think that same goes into those moments where you have self doubts. Um, you know, uh, I think that's something I, 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 I that's my challenge. Uh, I'm taking on this big responsibility now. I mean, just a couple of years ago, uh, I was not only a, uh, not a dad, but a single guy, right? Living, living that whole world. And then overnight almost, you know, uh, dad from you know, living in an apartment to in a house and the family and, 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 you know, my fiance scaling back from full-time to part-time and taking on the financial, uh, all the financial that comes with that and responsibility. So it's been a, a, a heavy fear, fear-based year for me in that regard. Um, like, man, can I do this? Can I handle this? Uh, it's, it's scary. Um, so I've had to do a lot of my, you know, shifting and just the way of thinking uh, lately, last few months, especially um, in terms of how it's go time. Uh, and how can I look at this and be present with all of this that's going on, right? Right. How do I become present with myself, my my child, my family, my business, my clients? And and the one thing that I think is like if I'm if I'm if I live in that place, you know, by me not going forward and pushing through, I'm not only just servicing myself, my family, but my clients as well, or all the people that I could be helping out there. So well, Bobby, you know, listen, remember we talked about possibility a couple of moments ago. The powerful thing in the question that you just asked is how can I be present with my family, my client, everything that's going on? There's already a presupposition in the way that you ask the question that assumes what's possible is indeed possible. Mm-hmm. So uh, the way that you're asking the question, you've already assumed the possibility. Now it's just a way to figure out how to get it done. Mm-hmm. And that's, I really appreciate the way that you frame the question. And remember, if it can be done, it can be done by Bobby. No doubt. You just got to figure out the how. So don't ever lose that sight of that possibility as you continue to get into bigger and bigger game every day, uh, every day of your life. Amen. Appreciate that. Grab. Appreciate you taking it on, brother. Make the world a better place. All right. All right, my friends. 
I'm going to let you go. I want to wish all of you tremendous gratitude for playing at a high level today. You have, I felt like this group is present. We are energetically there with each other. Alexander, I know you put your hand up, brother. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to, to acknowledge you, but thank you for, or thank you for uh, raising your hand in the process. All of you, tremendous, prosperous new year coming up for you. I hope we all get to cross paths in this, in this 2022 that is nowhere but up from what we've been at. And for whatever reason, we get to choose to make it that way. Much love, my friends. We'll see you later. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.